Uh, I was thinking about this and I, <laughs> I wanted to call Charlotte Buzz City because of the Hornets. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know where I got that from. Uh, but we're going to talk about Buzz City. Um, I don't know any other nickname for Charlotte. Shartown. Uh, the, you go with Cleveland's the land. Charlotte's the lit. The Charlotte. Charlotte. The lit. The lit. The lit city. Um, Charlotte City. Let's talk about the Hornets. Uh, LaMelo Ball. Got to start there. Wow. Uh, I don't know if anyone thought he'd be this good this quickly, this integral this quickly, um, and just uh, awe-inspiring this quickly. Um, I think it was Ryan Russillo who said a, a while back that he kind of underestimated the importance of respecting your teammates um, and taking kind of the league seriously. There's kind of a sense, you know, when LaMelo was in Australia or whatever, you know, the effort wasn't there, and you know, there's it goes without saying that there's a big difference between Australian basketball and American basketball. Um, just from a talent standpoint, nothing against the Australian basketball. Um, Australian national team is very talented, um, and I'm, I'm sure their their domestic league is as well. Um, but yeah, Lamelo Ball bursts onto the scene. Um, you know, rookie of the year. Um, basically renders Devontae Graham useless to them, so they trade him away. Um, other than that, other move, uh, bringing Mason Plumley basically for free. To I mean, they absorb that contract. I personally don't think that contract's that bad. Um, I think he, he proved in Detroit he, he can do a lot of good things. Um, now he's obviously... I mean, he's one of those guys that's going to get dunked on at least three or four times. Uh... And he's going to end up on the wrong side of more highlights than the right side of them. But at the end of the day, you know, a grit and grind guy uh, that uh, replaces Cody Zeller. Uh, whether he's an upgrade, maybe slightly, uh, but probably not by much. And, you know, as I've kind of gone through the East, uh, you know, the past couple months... I, I just get stuck in the same thing where it's like all these teams have been improving um, and really, you know, 6 through 10 has gotten really muddled. Uh, who knows who's going to be in the play-in tournament? Who knows who's going to maybe surprise some people and, and get it just straight into the playoffs as a top six team in the East? Um, and the Hornets did not make a major move, uh, you know, thus far this offseason. Um, you know, I think there's there's a lot to be excited about with James Boop Knight. Uh, if I just gonna, the way I said that makes it seem like I don't know how to pronounce it. I really didn't say that confidently. You know what I'm talking about. I think I think uh, you know there's reason to be excited about him, and you can probably con contribute uh, you know right away to some degree. Um, and you're looking at you know they extended Terry Rozier, putting a lot of faith in him. Uh, that contract is fine. I could see him plateau a little bit. Um, I, I could see, I mean, with LaMelo there, Terry Rozier's ceiling is limited just because touches are limited. And, you know, he's not going to have to facilitate as much. Um, so statistically, I don't see him, you know, seeing his numbers skyrocket. Um, but, you know, 20 points a game probably is worth you know, 20 to 25 million a year. That's just the NBA right now. Um, and we can't forget Gordon Hayward's on this team. Uh, you bring in a healthy Gordon Hayward, Terry, LaMelo, you know, PJ Washington showed flashes. Um, and now you have, you know, a solid defensive anchor in Mason Plumley to round out the starting five. Maybe you go you bridges off the bench. Um, also signed Kelly Oubre, which I think, you know, kind of flew under the radar. Obviously, he had some, like, historical struggles from three uh, to start the season with Golden State. But, you know, he evened out, and I think he could be really good for them as, as um, you know, whether he maybe starts at power forward, comes off the bench, um, you know, leaves the second unit. Uh, you know, sneaky signing there. Uh, I think makes a lot of sense. Another athletic guy. I mean, this team is going to be really fun to watch, regardless of what their record ends up being. Um, 
you've got a lot of high flyers. It's gonna be a lot of lobs, a lot of fast breaks, a lot of transition points. Um, but what comes with a pay, like fast pace like that is gonna be turnovers. Um, so if they can limit turnovers and still you know play at that pace, I think they're gonna be they're gonna be trouble down the stretch. Um, another signing is Smith. Uh, that guy's like also underrated and like sneaky kind of just killer backup point guard. Um, but at the end of the day, they basically handed the keys to Lamelo. I mean, this is his squad. Um, I personally wish they went big in the draft or made some move because you know they uh, they really needed like an actual center. I think you put like a solid starting center, not solid. It's gonna have to be like all star caliber. Um, then we're talking. You know, this team's probably. I'd feel better about putting them between six and ten. Um, because, listen, like, no disrespect to the Hornets, uh, but, like, the only guys I can see really taking another step, like, LaMelo obviously ceiling it is through the roof. Um, if that's possible, you can't really have a ceiling go through the roof. But then the roof becomes a ceiling. Regardless of that, he's, I mean, like, Rozier, P.J. Washington, Miles Bridges, uh, I personally don't expect them to, you know, make like a Julius Randle type jump in this upcoming year and, and just in general in their career. Mason Plumlee, we kind of know what he is. Um, and, uh, and losing Malik Monk, uh, I feel like that hurts. I don't know if they really made an effort to resign him or they were just like sick of like being hopeful about him and then losing hope and then getting it back. And But, you know, he started finally to show flashes that he can make contributions on a winning team and it seems like just at the moment that that happens they lose him uh which i i don't know uh i mean and he took literally the like no money to play in la which you know obviously a lot of guys do but he definitely could have made more in a number of places and i feel like charlotte would have been one of them but uh Maybe that it was just too far gone. He was sick of them. They were sick of him. Uh, but that hurts. I feel like uh, a lot of people were excited about him. And so Charlotte's sitting here now with a young core. <laughs> um, how it ranks relative to other young cores. I mean, it is. There's not a Tatum, Jalen Brown. There's not. You know, a Fox, Bagley, Halliburton. Like, it doesn't, it does, you can't compare them. Like, it, the Hornets are still a step back, even from other uh, young teams. Oh, I thought I hit the stop one. Oh, rear end me, please. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's. I think this Hornets team is going to be sick to watch. I think they'll be really cool. A lot of highlights. Their commentator is freaking nuts. Um, and I guarantee you at least half half of the home games, we're going to get a clip on Bleacher Report of this guy going nuts about something. Uh, so there's that. And that, that alone, uh, if you're a Hornets fan, should make you very excited, very happy. Um, now, whether you want, you know, an alley-oop where the home commentary is freaking crazy uh, and an 11 spot in the East, uh, then fair enough. Um, they'll, I think I'll put their range is probably like 7 to 12. Because, and you're, and you're going to say, dude, but the East and, and, you know, it's the Hornets, like they could do it. And again, I'll run through it again. You know, the Bulls added DeMar DeRozan um, and Lonzo Ball. And they were not in the play-in last year. Washington was 10. They arguably got better. Um, you know, Indiana, new coach. They were in the play-in. They'll probably be in that, that space again. Boston, same thing. And, you know, obviously Detroit got better. A lot of people think Detroit could make the play-in. Really, the only ones were Orlando and maybe Cleveland are like the two you 
pretty much can rule out. Even then, I, I don't feel comfortable ruling out either of them. I believe more in Cleveland than Orlando at this point, but just to, as, as a principle, I, I don't think you can can rule them out. And like, what are you left? Like Toronto didn't make the play-in. You have to imagine Toronto is probably gonna be in the mix. So, uh, like, you're gonna have to pick a team that it's like, sorry guys, but uh, I just don't, you're the odd man out this time. And because Charlotte had a relatively quiet off season, I have to think that even with, you know, some development of their young guys, it probably won't be enough um, of an improvement to, to, you know, go toe-to-toe with an addition like DeMar DeRozan and Lonzo Ball. Like, you can't say that. So, Charlotte, I'm sorry. Uh, I love your team. I love Buzz City, uh, mostly because I just possibly coined that. But if not, let me know, and I'll be slightly disappointed, but also excited. Like, that commentator's like, oh, in Buzz City! Bridges! You know? Uh, that was a poor, that was a poor impression, but I, I, I went for it, and that's what matters. And the and the Charlotte Hornets are going to go for it, and that's what matters. Let's bring it up close. Listen, Charlotte, Buzz City fans, um, I can't wait to watch your team. And I think uh, you can't wait to watch your team. We're all very excited. So let's not worry too much about wins and losses right now and just have a good time. Uh, it's it's you're, you're, The squad's young, okay? So don't have too high expectations for them. Let them learn. Uh, let them get better. And uh, you get better, huh? Take care of yourselves. That's not like a threat. You get better. Just, you know, day in, day out. Try and get a little better at something, okay? And take care of yourselves. Take it easy. And I'll see you next time.